In Good Shape, your weekly dose of health information on Deutsche Welle. Find out more about what's new in medical treatment, alternative medicine, as well as nutrition, wellness, and beauty. Medical professionals, therapists, and counselors are in our studio to offer their expert advice on In Good Shape. And joining me in the studio today is Professor Robert Jütte from Stuttgart. He's an historian of medicine and an expert on the placebo effect. Welcome to the show, Professor Jütte. Hello. Great to have you here. Um, it's estimated that up to 80% of a successful pain relief is due to the placebo effect. Are there any other medical conditions where placebo might work? According to the studies, uh, quite a number, up to 80 studies, we have tell that it's hypertension, for example, high blood pressure, but also, for example, stomach ulcers uh, can also be treated with placebo. So they really heal, the stomach ulcers can really heal due to placebo treatment? Absolutely, it depends whether you live in Brazil or in Germany. So the placebo reaction is much higher in Germany than in, in Brazil. So, But uh, it shows that the placebo effect is also culturally dependent. So how is that? Do you have any idea why that is? We don't know, but we need more studies to show that the placebo effect uh, varies from, from nation or from ethnic community to ethnic community. But we have studies which show that. And, and within the German community, are there any patients which respond very well to placebos, like kids or elder people? Uh, this is the question we call placebo responders. Um, we try to find out whether they are placebo responders, but all studies show that there is no typical placebo responder, and even genetic studies didn't prove that there is a placebo responder. So it, it varies also, so everybody can be a placebo responder in one way or another. So what are placebos anyway? Are they just medications like drugs I have to swallow, like a pill, or is any doctor treatment a placebo? First, we have to differentiate between pure placebo, that means the sugar pill, or for example, um, sham surgery, so which just plays a surgery, or the so-called impure placebo, which can be vitamin pills, but also antibiotics in certain cases. So they have a pharmaceutical uh, um, active ingredients, but they don't work in this particular case. But we also have the therapeutical context, which is very much effective and which also constitutes the uh, placebo effect. So what does make a placebo work at all? Does research have any answers to this question? We have made progress. We only know that there are two different mechanisms obviously working. One is that the expectation is working and it affects the, the brain, a certain area in the brain, which we now know. And the other one is that you, uh, conditioning also plays a, a role that, for example, you can train the body to react to, um, for example, a, a shot together with the active medicine. And if you leave out the active medicine, just the shot you get, it also works after after a certain time. So it's not all about suggestion because some experts su suggest actually that um, some patients um, react to the placebo even if the patient knows that it is a placebo drug he's taking. Yeah, that's uh, striking because we believe that it was deception and only deception works. But uh, now we have so-called open label studies where, it's told, where the patient is told that he gets placebo and it's even written on the bottle and he takes it and he is, uh, feels better after a certain while. So if placebos are so successful, why do we have to give medications anyway? That's a good question because of the influence of the pharmaceutical industry, but uh, also doctors, of course, uh, don't accept this effect because it's out of their control, so to speak. And if you study at medical school for many years and you can do it even without that, so what's the difference? <laughs> Professor Jutta, recent studies have shown that there's a little difference between um, the working of real acupuncture treatment or the fake one, that the results are similar. How's that? It's even more complicated. Some, in some cases, sham acupuncture is better than real acupuncture. In some cases, it's the same. But what's for the patient the most important <coughs> result is that it's both are better than conventional medicine and in treating some uh, 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 some diseases. So that's uh, that's fascinating, and we don't know what's working. Is this a placebo effect or not? But uh, obviously, there must be something happening because if sham acupuncture is even better than real acupuncture. But it's difficult to explain, but for the patient, the result is the important thing. So, so sticking a needle into the skin of the patient might work better than just swallowing a tablet, but it even works better than getting an injection? Absolutely. This is what we know according to the clinical studies we did in Germany, but also elsewhere. And that's the reason why, for example, in Germany, the health insurance companies are paying for a certain type of treatment with acupuncture, for example, for osteoarthritis or also for pain, back pain and, and so on, because the studies show acupuncture works even if it's sham acupuncture. And is this somehow related to the self-healing power of, of the human body? 
the self-healing power plays a role in conventional treatment and also in in sham treatment and therefore um, we can use a placebo effect to improve the self-healing uh, powers of, of, of the body but it's not as the same as the placebo effect so we have to so to speak to deduct the uh, self-healing powers from the placebo effect and and do scientists know what self-healing power is all about what it is actually We, we try hard to understand this because we only have a few studies which have really a three-arm trial where you have placebo, where you have the, the real medicine and where you have a group which doesn't get anything. So only if you have the third group, we know what self-healing is about. So this is the rest which is still in the healing process, which uh, sums up this is the self-healing power. Absolutely, then. but usually we only do placebo studies. That means the, uh, the real medicine versus the placebo, but not the third group, which is on the waiting list. When I'm a patient, can I boost somehow my self-healing powers to get uh, healthier quickly? Absolutely, for example, in, uh, because you also can enhance the placebo effect by trusting your doctor and uh, doing what he's suggesting and to choose the right doctors. That's, I think, the most important thing you can do. So, so can I prescribe myself a placebo drug without seeing my doctor? Uh, if you believe uh, very strongly, can I think you can also achieve this, but the doctor is even better because it, he, he is the drug, so to speak, and, but also you can do it yourself. And in your point of view, the doctor is not a liar if he's prescribing me a placebo and not a real drug. Uh, no, but you have to be careful because informed consent is now a, an ethical standard and you have to inform the patients in general that there is a therapy which works non-specific. But if you tell him and he accepts it, then can you, you can do that. All this fascinating stuff. Thanks so much for being here and giving us also insights into placebo therapy. Thanks so much. 